If a fire started in your company, would you know what to do? In this program, we show you what different types of fire there are, how you can prevent a fire, and what you must do if fire breaks out. It's vital that you're aware of fire hazards in your workplace. By being alert and reacting appropriately, if an accident happens, you can prevent expensive damage and save lives. It's therefore important that you're fully aware of the safety procedures in your company and take fire drills seriously. What you remember from this training may at some point save your life. In any war, it's important to know the enemy. Since mankind learned to control fire, it has been both friend and foe. Without fire, we'd be helpless against nature. Modern production processes would also be impossible. But there is a darker side to fire. It can destroy. An uncontrolled and unsupervised fire destroys everything in its path, including people. In this program, we're going to consider fire as an enemy. Combustion only occurs when three essential elements are in place. If one of these elements is not present, a fire won't start. If one is taken away once the fire has started, then the fire will go out. Firstly, fire needs fuel or something flammable. The fuel can be a solid material, a liquid or a gas. Secondly, there must be sufficient oxygen to keep the fire going. Fire is fed by oxygen. A fire cannot start in an oxygen-free environment. Such a situation is almost non-existent naturally on Earth. Air contains around 21% oxygen. We need around 20% in order to breathe, but fire only requires around 16% oxygen in order to thrive. The third element is something to cause ignition. In some cases, a spark is sufficient. In other cases, adequate heat suffices. When these three elements combine, it starts a chain reaction that leads to a fire. Different types of material require different levels of heat in order to combust. But with sufficient heat and a supply of oxygen, almost everything around you can burn. Fire is subdivided into various categories, depending on the material or the fuel. You must be aware of these fire categories because you can't employ the same method to extinguish every type of fire. If you've ever seen an oil fire, you probably know that water just makes it worse, whilst putting out an electric fire with water is likely to result in electrocution. The most common fire is a category A fire. Normal flammable materials such as wood, paper and textiles are the fuel for category A fires. Water is an excellent way of extinguishing a category A fire. Category B fires are started by combustion of liquids. A petrol fire is a category B fire. There's a significant risk of explosion with such fires. Category C fires are started by combustion of gases. A propane fire is a category C fire. There's also a risk of explosion with these fires. If the fuel for a fire is a flammable metal, it's known as a category D fire. It's unlikely that you'll encounter these fires in everyday life, but they do occur. Metals such as magnesium, titanium and sodium are potential fuel for category D fires. Many fires start in kitchens, normally through unsaturated fats overheating and igniting. If your workplace has a large commercial kitchen, it's vital to have a category F fire extinguisher, a deep fat fryer or fat fire extinguisher. Fires caused by electricity are not regarded as a specific fire category, as electricity itself can't start fires, but it's a common cause of fires. This is often due to short circuiting or an overloaded wall socket. Electrical fires can generally be put out using a category A or B fire extinguisher. If a fire breaks out, you need to identify what type of fire it is and know what to do, depending on the fire category.
Whether you work in a factory or an office, you work with flammable materials. Remember, all a fire needs is oxygen, fuel, and a way of igniting through heat or a spark. If you work in an office, make sure that there are no large stacks of paper or rubbish lying around. This includes making sure that waste paper bins aren't overflowing. If you smoke, observe the warning notices and only smoke in designated areas. Make sure you put out your cigarette and dispose of it in the appropriate place. A burning cigarette stub, carelessly tossed in a waste bin, has been the cause of a number of serious fires. If you work with equipment that uses flammable materials or needs cleaning with rags that become greasy, store everything that may be flammable in a sealed metal tin, well away from any potential source of ignition. In office blocks, the main cause of fire is arson. Always adhere strictly to safety measures and report any suspicious activity. If you work with materials which can potentially cause a category B or C fire, such as flammable liquids or gases, take extra precautions. These materials may only be used in well-ventilated spaces and must be kept away from anything which can produce sparks. Flammable liquids must be stored in sealed, leak-proof containers. For all flammable liquids, use only approved containers certainly where a large quantity is stored in a building. Outside storage sites must be at a safe distance from buildings. A correct category fire extinguisher must be located outside within 23 meters of these storage sites and inside within 3 meters of the storage site. Some companies are classified as high-risk areas owing to the materials with which they work. These include sites where benzene and other flammable liquids are processed or stored. If you work in a high-risk area, you must observe all the prescribed fire prevention measures. Fortunately, most of us will never be involved in a Category D fire, as they're only caused by flammable metals. The incredible heat required to start this type of fire makes them extremely dangerous. If you work with flammable metals such as magnesium, titanium or sodium, make sure you always observe the safety procedures. If your job involves preparing food, take extra care. Never leave a pan of oil on the stove unattended. Don't put anything on a burner unless you're sure that the burner will not cause a fire. In large commercial kitchens, make sure there's always a category F fire extinguisher at hand. Never try to put out an oil fire with water, as it will spread. Although a fire caused by electricity isn't given an official fire category, it's a common cause of fire. The burning elements can be extinguished using category A and B extinguishers. Remember, don't use water, or you run the risk of being electrocuted. All electrical equipment must have its wiring and fittings checked regularly for wear and damage. Defective electrical equipment is a fire waiting to happen, so report defects immediately. Make sure extension leads aren't worn or broken, and never run them under flooring or carpets. If you see exposed wiring, turn off the electricity and get it repaired or replaced straight away. Secure extension leads and cables away, so they can't be walked over or damaged accidentally. Make sure that electrical motors are in good working order and that they're clean. Oil and dirt is the perfect environment for a fire to start, particularly if the motor becomes overheated. Don't let this happen. Never use a fuse which is higher than the circuit specification, as it can cause overheating and fire. Wall power points must not be overloaded. If two connections are needed, then two plugs must be used. Don't connect more than one heat-producing appliance per socket. For example, in a kitchen, a coffee machine and the microwave must be connected at different sockets and not right next to each other. Switch off at the socket when the equipment is not in use. With electrical equipment, watch out for strange smells, such as burning plastic or wiring. This may be an early warning sign that a fire is starting. Switch off the appliance, unplug it if it's safe to do so, and investigate the cause. Ensure also that light bulbs in your workplace don't come into contact with flammable materials. For example, an unshaded bulb in an office light could easily cause a fire if it came in close contact with fuel such as a sheet of paper. 
Lights are designed to take a bulb of a specific wattage. Never use a higher wattage bulb. However careful you are, the fact remains that fires do happen. And if they do, you must know what to do. Otherwise, you may not survive. If the alarm goes off, the emergency services go into action. Leave the building immediately, not five or ten minutes later when you finish sending an email or pack your bag and put on your coat, now. If your company uses other alarms such as whistles, sirens or light signals, make sure you know which one's the fire alarm. Some buildings also use a public address system to help staff by giving them further instructions. Remember, if you hear the fire alarm, act quickly. Leave everything and move quickly, but don't panic. If you're the last to leave the room, close the door behind you, but don't lock it. Locked doors can hinder the emergency services. Don't assume the fire alarm is just a drill. Even if you can't see a fire or smell any smoke, there may be a fire in another part of the building. Fire can spread very rapidly and is highly unpredictable. If you ignore a fire alarm, you could end up trapped in a burning building. If you hear the alarm, you need to know where to go according to the evacuation plan for your building. This may be a different route from the one you usually take. This is why fire drills are so important and why you must take them seriously. During a drill, it's easy to see where you're going. But would you be able to find your way out if the room was full of smoke or there was no electricity? Taking part in a fire drill is the best way of familiarizing yourself with exit procedures. It's hard to remain calm during a fire, so make sure that you know where the emergency exits are before you need them. In some buildings, there'll be more than one escape route. Fire is so unpredictable that it's vital to have alternative ways of getting out. Never use the lift to leave a burning building. You could end up trapped, and some lifts don't function in the event of fire. It may be that certain employees have special responsibilities as part of the emergency plan in the event of an emergency. Fire safety officers, for example, check that everyone has left the building. They also draw up special evacuation plans for disabled staff. Escape routes should be the shortest routes possible with sufficient space to allow all staff through, including people in wheelchairs. Employers must also mark doors that may be mistaken for emergency exits. A no exit sign may mean that someone ends up trapped in a burning building. Exits must never be blocked. All staff must be familiar with the escape routes and know where to assemble following an emergency evacuation. The assembly point must be at a safe distance from the building. The evacuation plan for your company may include an escape area. This is a pre-designated area inside the building and away from the fire. Observe the evacuation plan for your company with regard to this escape area. If you have to leave a building and you come across a closed door, use the back of your hand to feel whether the door is hot. If it is, don't open it. This may be the only thing between you and the fire. In this case, you fall back on your second escape route. Remember, remaining calm may save your life. Think of the fire drill and don't panic. If you become trapped, try to block the ventilation holes and the chinks around the doors. Keep down on the floor where there's less smoke and more oxygen. If your clothes catch on fire, don't start running. This provides the fire with more oxygen and will fan the flames. Do precisely the opposite. Stop, drop to the ground, and roll backwards and forwards to smother the flames. Remember that you must always leave the building if you hear a fire alarm. However, there may be situations where you'll have to fight the fire yourself. You should always know where the fire extinguishers are located and how they should be used. Let's say that you're at work and notice smoke. A small fire has broken out. Sound the alarm immediately and find a fire extinguisher. If you can't bring things under control, stop trying and get out. 
never put yourself in a situation where the fire is between you and your escape route. Always stand with your back to the exit so that you don't become trapped. Extinguishers which were introduced to the market after the 1st of January 1997 must comply with the new European legislation, which is Norm NEN AND3. Make sure that you use the correct fire extinguisher depending on the fire category. Each fire extinguisher is marked with a category sign. This indicates clearly which category of fire the extinguisher is suitable for. Some fire extinguishers have multiple ratings and most will have instructions on how they should be used. First, pull out the security pin and then aim the fire extinguisher at the base of the fire. Whilst holding the fire extinguisher upright, squeeze the trigger firmly. Then move the fire extinguisher from side to side over the base of the flames. Fire is dangerous, unpredictable and life-threatening. Remember the basic steps in the event of a fire. Know what types of fire can occur in your workplace. Follow the correct safety procedures. If you don't, it could cost lives. Know how to fight a fire and which fire extinguisher to use. Know where the alarm is and how to escape. Hopefully, you'll never have to deal with a fire. But if you do, these instructions may help save your life. <laughs>